This is great, man. I would recommend this if you can't afford the RF lens. All right, guys, welcome back again to my channel. So yes, this is another honest review and it's for this bad boy right here. This is the Tamron 15-30 f2.8 VCDI for the Canon mount. Before we get started, though, I just want to say a big shout out again to the sponsor of this channel. Pretty much. If you need anything, let's say camera, video, or lighting needs, just go to their website at www.georges.com.au and they will hook you up. All right, let's begin, boys and girls. So let's talk about the pricing of this bad boy. Okay, so for brand new, this one is roughly around $25 to $2,800. But if you go to georges.com.au, they will hook you up and it's for sale at the moment. And it's roughly around $1,850. So it's about $1,000 off. So it's not too bad, not too shabby. All right, let's talk about the built quality of this bad boy. So I've held a lot of Tamron lenses in the past and most of them has this like, light feel like G Masters, but the built quality isn't the same as the G Masters. They're more on like a cheaper like material, so to speak, but this one right here just feels great. I don't know because it's a 15 to 30, so the element in front is very, very big. I don't know what it is, but this one right here has great feel. It's made out of metal. It's weather sealed. It's a lot better than the ones in the past, and I think they nailed it out of the park with this one. So well done, Tamron. All right, so let's talk about the lens features for this bad boy. So this was actually pretty, pretty cool. So first and foremost, you have your autofocus and your manual focus right there in front. And then obviously you got your VC right here, which is their, I think, vibration control, I think it's called. That means it's their image stabilizer. You can turn that on and off. I don't know why you turn it off. And then in the middle, you have your focus ring right there. And then at the top is obviously your zoom ring. So obviously it's 15 to 30, not 15 to 35, like most wide zoom lenses. And the throw isn't as far, which is quite good because you can just go wide, zoom 30, wide, zoom 30. And then another lens feature as well, this bad boy, which is freaking amazing, is the built-in lens hood in front, as you can see. Look at that, it's just, it's awesome. Look at that big element in front. So yeah, that's all it has and that's all literally what you need for this bad boy right here. All right, the next one is image quality. So yet again, I went around Bondi Junction for about an hour around lunchtime because that's when I shoot all my photos when I'm doing a review because as I said before in the past, pretty much cheating if you take your lenses and you do a review and you're shooting like in golden hour or blue hour because the photo is going to turn out freaking great. So what I do is literally shoot at the worst conditions, like light conditions. So I'm talking like harsh light. And the freaking hard thing about this lens is the front element, which we'll talk about in the cons. The glass is actually like a dome. It's got the fish eye look in front right there. And it's freaking impossible to put like a filter on top like an ND or you know like your polarizers so you can cut down the light and that's what I did you know I took this bad boy out for a spin for an hour as I said about the junction around lunchtime and these are the images that I got so I'm just gonna make myself coffee and I'll just play all these bangers for you guys so just be aware as well all these photos are raw untouched where it went from the camera to my computer and straight to your devices okay so hopefully you guys like these shots. Let's begin. Like I told you guys I was making coffee. <laughs> Yeah, uh, like uh, I wasn't shitting. No, I, I wasn't bullshitting you. Yeah. But yeah, like, you know, as I said, hopefully all these photos right here that you guys can see, you know, are great because I had fun literally shooting with this lens and, you know, my wide zoom lens that I, that I always use that's filming us right now is the 16 to 35 Mark II by Canon. It's like twice, you know, the price of this bad boy. It's nearly three grand. And I gotta admit, like, this has a bit of an edge. It's freaking amazing. This has a bit of an edge of my Canon 16-35 Mark II. It's pretty good, so I might do a little um, 
lens comparison as well in the future, okay? So let's talk about the pros and cons of this so we can wrap up this video. It's gonna be a real quick one. So the pros of this bad boy, as I said, you know, it's built great. It feels great. It's got probably one of the best image qualities out there. It's literally in line with Sigma at the moment with the 16 to 35 f 1.8 APS-C sensor lens. And that's, that's big, man, because Sigma, in my opinion, is a top dog for third-party lenses. But Tamron right now, especially this one, ooh, boy. All right, so one of the pros that I found for this bad boy, it's a fast zoom lens, big aperture of f2.8. Another one as well, it has weather sealing. So this is built like a brick shit house, not like some of the Tamron lenses in the past that I've used. They're very, like, it feels cheap, it feels light, and it feels like it's gonna break. But this one right here is built like Brock Lesnar, and it's, and it's great, you know, it feels professional, and, you know, it's cheap. And speaking of cheap, yes, it is cheaper than most f2.8 out there. It's a 15 to 30, obviously it doesn't go all the way up to 35, but that's okay because that 15 is, it's a, it's a, even though it's only like one millimeter difference than a 16, obviously, it feels like it's a lot wider than it is and it's awesome, you know? It doesn't have a bowing effect or the chromatic aberrations like most lenses, like the Canon one. And yeah, I mean, it's cheaper than all of them, especially if you want to look for the 15 to 35 RF, man. I'd recommend this one instead of the RF if you can't afford the RF, 100%. And it's another one as well that I found, it's got great image quality. Very, very surprising how great it did during lunchtime, you know, without any polarization, without any ND filters and all that shit. I mean, obviously it's impossible to fit a filter on top of this bad boy. I mean, just look at that. And another one as well, it has image stabilization, which my 16 to 35 Mark II doesn't have. This one has, it's the same as the RF 15 to 35, you know, they both have image stabilization and uh, I mean, this one doesn't go to 35, but that's okay, because it's cheaper. So it's, dude, this lens, this lens is, whoo, Tamron, you knocked it out of the park with this bad boy. All right. So now that the pros are out of the way, let's talk about the cons, boys and girls. So the cons, as I said before, most wide zoom lenses go to 35. This one limits itself to 30. Why? I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why, to be honest. I've never, I don't really shoot with Tamron's. I don't know the back history, the backstory of why it's only got to 30, but it does. And for some people, that's not enough reach especially for a wide zoom lens. You know, most people would go, as I said, 15 to 35 or 20 to 45 or whatever it is. But yeah, this one's only doubles, 15 to 30. I don't know why. I don't know why, but it is. And for some people, I can see why that's very, very annoying, especially for the price. If you don't go to George's cameras, this bad boy is gonna cost you 2,800 bucks. So that's one of the cons that I found, okay? Another one as well, obviously with a freaking big ass element in front, the Eye of Sauron with the dome look and all that stuff. It's very, very front heavy. So when you are throwing the 15 all the way to 30, you have that front tilt because it has internal, what do you call it, internal zoom? Yeah, it's an internal zoom, but yeah, it literally just goes forward when you're shooting. And you know, most lenses will dust that, but this one, because of that dome look and it only goes to 15 to 30, you feel it shift very, very fast. Another one as well, because of the built-in hood lens and the dome look of the Eye of Sauron looking at the front there, it is impossible, or close to impossible, to get a filter for this. I mean, uh, I don't know how you're gonna put a filter in this one. Maybe like a cap, like the, um, the lens cap maybe, I don't know. But if you don't have an RF mount, you know, cause some of the RF mount adapters has that built in like ND filter, which is quite cool. Totally unnecessary in my opinion, but you know, if you wanna get that by all means, but for this one right here, it's very, very hard. It's almost impossible so to put a filter in just because of that massive eye element in front. But it's about it really, like the small pros and cons, which is freaking amazing. Tamron, well done. So who is this lens for? Wide zoom lens, I would suggest for the cityscapers, the landscapers, or the street shooters, or astrophotographers, I reckon. It's got a very, very fast aperture of f. 2.8 it's got image stabilization which is freaking amazing because as i said my 16 to 35 mark ii that's filming me right now has none of that and it costs twice the amount if you're in a budget as well sigma is a bit more expensive than this so i would suggest tamron is the right lens for you 
photographers, videographers, anyone who shoots a lot of events, you want something wide that's not going to bow because most of the, um, uh, what, what do you call it, fisheye lenses that has that, you know, that bowing effect, that massive glass element, it's, it tends to warp. This one doesn't, which is good. I mean, it does a little bit, but not as much. You know, just seeing that eye, that element in front, you think it's going to bow, but it doesn't, it does well, you know, the lines are, you know, nice and straight, especially around the edges and yeah. This one, cityscapers, landscapers, wedding photographers or event shooters, something cheap that's got great built quality and image quality. Look no further than the Tamron 15 to 30 VC. This lens is freaking good. Should I keep it? Oh, maybe, maybe. You know, I do have big news up ahead, but it's going to be in another video. But yeah, hopefully you like this little piece right here, little quick honest review. I'm going to keep my honest review a little short and sweet for you guys. And yeah, if you like this banging right here, click like, subscribe. I'm nearly, I'm nearly on 200 subs. So thank you guys so much for, you know, watching my shit, <laughs> supporting me and stuff like that. You guys are freaking awesome, man. I'm not doing, I'm, I wouldn't be doing this without you guys. So that's about it for me. This is Kylo, aka I Capture It, drinking my coffee with the Jason Mawa mug. And get out of here. Enjoy your week. Peace out. Stay safe. <laughs>